If you are a writer, an artist, or a creative of any kind, you have surely run into the issue of imposter syndrome, or at the very least, you've heard about it, you know what it is. Whether you are currently experiencing imposter syndrome right now, or you want to be ready for it when it inevitably comes, be sure to stay tuned because today we're going to be talking about how to recognize imposter syndrome, how to combat it, and how to move on and still create, even though you may not feel like it. Let's get started. Hello everyone, my name is David Webb and I made this channel to give you the best tips on writing and creativity so you can finally finish your book or have that creative career you've always dreamed of. For those of you who watch my channel somewhat regularly, you know it's been several months since I've uploaded and if you watched my most recent video, you have some idea as to why. I've been working very hard on my new job and then I've also been working very hard on my latest book. But now that as of just a couple days ago, my latest book is finally released, I have a little bit more time to focus on YouTube and hopefully moving forward, I can better balance a full-time job, writing, and YouTube. So here's hoping. Speaking of my new book, again, it just came out a couple days ago and I'm really excited. This is probably the most excited I've been about one of my books. I mean, the cover alone, it came together at the last second and I love it. I think it's amazing. I'm super excited. The story came together in a really awesome way in the final days of it. In the entire process, I was a little iffy about the entire thing. Coincidentally, dealing with imposter syndrome throughout a lot of it, uh, but it really kind of came together at the last minute. and. I'm thrilled with how it turned out. So if you have read through the fourth book, be sure to check out the fifth copy today. And if you haven't read any of them, if you do like dystopian thrillers, if you do like female protagonists, if you like twisty turny stories, be sure to check it out. I don't think it'll disappoint you. They're all cheaply available as paperbacks and eBooks. So head over to Amazon and get your copy today. With that said, let's get into it. So what is imposter syndrome? Well, it was first named back in the seventies by a couple of women who initially theorized that it was really a female issue that only women really experienced imposter syndrome. And they identified it as the feeling that your success is only due to luck and not due to your actual talents. And since then, through research and interviews and whatnot, we, we found that imposter syndrome is a global issue and not just a female one. Men and women experience this sensation somewhat equally. And it's been expanded to the feeling of not only your success coming due to luck, but also the feeling that you shouldn't be doing what you're doing, that you're not good enough, that you're a faker, that you're an imposter. It's such a worldwide phenomenon that so many people have experienced it, not really knowing that it is an actual thing and it has a name. But if I had to guess, I would say that just about every creative has experienced it. And if they haven't already, they will at some point. I don't want to be that person and say that you are going to experience this. But statistically, just knowing how creatives work, it's a very good bet that you will at some point feel this way. So if you haven't experienced imposter syndrome already, don't close this video because you will want to know how to combat it if and when it does show up in your life. There are many different kinds of imposter syndrome, and I'm going to be talking about them somewhat generally today, and I'm sure at a somewhat later date I will be diving into each different kind specifically, but they range from a heightened sense of perfectionism, feeling that your work needs to be perfect or it's just not good enough, to the feeling of needing to be an expert on a subject before you're qualified to talk about it or exercise it, all the way to people feeling like they have to accomplish a task alone and without the help of others, otherwise they're not truly qualified. Imposter syndrome can be such a vague and ambiguous phenomenon that no one has ever truly narrowed down as to why people experience this. Psychologists have theorized that only people with anxiety experience imposter syndrome, while others can identify cases where that's simply not true. So while I cannot point to one specific cause for imposter syndrome, I'd like to just attribute it to a part of the human condition where if we feel the need to create something and give it to others as a form of entertainment or education, anything, we're going to at some point feel like it's just not good enough. I really wish I could give a firm answer on this, but I've just come to accept that it's only human to feel this way. But I would say for the most part that creatives are particularly prone to this issue. So how do you deal with imposter syndrome? And it is possible, and I know because I've done it, I've been forced to do it 
multiple times over the last 12 to 13 years that I've been writing. What makes it even more tricky for people to overcome imposter syndrome is that there are many ways to do it. I wish I could give you five easy ways to deal with imposter syndrome because I mean, that's the kind of thing that'll get you clicks on YouTube. <laughs> for some of you, all you need to do is just push through it and write anyway. It's how a lot of people deal with writer's block in general. It's how people deal with feelings of insecurity or doubt. Simply pushing through it and writing anyway could be all you need. I ask that you don't write this advice off because a lot of people hate this advice. They hate hearing that more than anything. And they think that being told to push through something is a, an unhealthy way to deal with certain issues. And for some, like depression, yeah, it's a terrible piece of advice to just tell someone to get over it and push through it anyway. And depending on the kind of imposter syndrome that you struggle with, it can still be a really bad idea to just push through it. It's incredibly subjective, like most writing advice that you see on the internet, even some of the stuff that you see on this channel. For some people, getting over imposter syndrome can be as simple as reframing the way you think about it. For people with good emotional regulation, if you can identify the way you're feeling as not helpful to your writing, or even better, something that's just not true, that you are talented, then that right there could be the solution to your imposter syndrome, is simply taking a step back and identifying it as a waste of emotion. And for some of you out there, that advice sounds so laughably ridiculous because you know it's just something that you wouldn't be able to do. And in your case, it isn't your answer then. But there are those people who can remove themselves from their emotions, and if you can, this is probably the easiest way to deal with it. Another way to deal with imposter syndrome is to recognize that at some point, just about every creative in the world has dealt with this. The reason I made this video was because I was watching the Friends reunion on HBO just the other day, and Matt LeBlanc, the guy who played Joey Tribbiani on Friends, said that he would watch some of the episodes and feel like... It's hard to watch myself, but I feel that way about anything I do because I don't believe the acting that I'm doing because I know it's not true because it was me doing it. <laughs> that's, called, that's what you do for a living. No, I know, but it's, it's weird to look at myself. I'm like, I don't buy a word of it. And he do you enjoy them when you watch them? He enjoys them more than I do because I'm mortified with myself. Why? But I don't know. You're so good. I don't know. He knew almost intuitively that the others were great at their jobs, but he just couldn't see it in himself. And I would argue that he was one of the funniest of the bunch, if not the best one. And I say all that because just about everyone deals with this, even on the highest levels. And so if you're feeling imposter syndrome because you think you're not as good as those around you, if the highest paid actors in the world feel this way, you know that it's not real. It, it's not fact, it doesn't come from a genuine, true thought in your head. Uh, yeah, we all have areas we need to work on. None of us are perfect. We're all improving in our craft. But this feeling, it's not healthy and it's not true. Simply recognizing that everyone deals with this and therefore it can't be true may be the answer to your dealing with imposter syndrome. For some of you, you may need to talk to a coach. You may need to talk to a friend you may need to talk to a counselor. Someone who can help you separate yourself from your feelings and look at them objectively, look at them critically, analytically, and decide for yourself whether they're real or not. Find out why you're feeling the way you're feeling. Maybe analyze what part of your work you're stuck on that is making you feel like you're not as good as you should be, or you're not as good as people say you are. Honestly, the mere act of talking to another person about this could really help you in and of itself. And if I could leave you with one final thought on imposter syndrome, the goal is not necessarily to get rid of the feeling. The feeling is something that will probably plague most creators on and off throughout their lives. The feeling, unfortunately, will always come back to haunt us. Therefore, the goal should not be to completely eradicate the feeling from your life because the desire to do so and then the failure to do so can be really discouraging. The goal is to deal with it in a healthy way, to deal with it in a way that allows us to continue our creative work and push through and get through it anyway. Doing so may require a little bit of faith. Faith in the fact that what you're doing matters, that what you're doing, you're doing well, even if it doesn't feel like it, even if you can't see it. It's hard to quantify, it's hard to put into words exactly what this means to any one person. You may have to decide that for yourself. But if you just hold on, if you just push through it, you'll get to the other side. The feeling may come back, it may never really leave, 
But if you just keep going, you'll be rewarded for your efforts. Of that, I'm positive. And with that, I think I've said all I wanted to say today about imposter syndrome. Something to introduce you to the issue if you're not familiar with it already and get you started in getting past this feeling and pushing through, still creating, still being productive, even if you don't feel like it. Don't forget to check out my fancy new book with the fancy new cover. Thank you to those of you who have stuck around waiting for me to upload videos. I really appreciate your support, the comments you leave, and for those of you who have connected with me personally on Discord, a huge shout out to you because you've really kept me going in these last few months when I've been really busy. Uh, our writing sprints twice a week have made all the difference in the world, and a lot of times throughout the process of this fifth book, they helped me finish the first draft. I don't plan on going anywhere anytime soon. I don't know how regular my uploads will be, but I really want to do them more regularly. So be sure to stay tuned, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already, and then be sure to hit the notification bell because according to YouTube, if you haven't done that, you may not as well even be subscribed and you may never see another video again. Thank you again for watching. My name is David Webb and get some writing done.